G'day folks. Well just before I scrap these tyres I figure I'll give you a bit of a look at what happened to them. I don't have the um, big uh, 31 inch uh, SUV tyre. I've already dis dismantled and scrapped that one. But this one here I didn't get on high speed film but this one I did. Uh, this was an early, I think it was a late night just enterprise. I put the big floodlight out and thought I'd blow this one up with, with high pressure water. As you can see it's got an old inner tube in it so it was easy just to pull the air out of it and uh, fill it up with water. Absolutely no air left in it. And it's got the most interesting results where the steel cables have uh, stretched but you can see it's tried to relax back into its original state and sort of hasn't. <laughs> you have to excuse the wind, it's pretty bad out here. But you can see where the cables were pulled all the way through up to about there. And it's just let go in a big way. This one let go at 250 psi water pressure. Of course it was already this rotten and cracked, like it's very very old, it's badly dry rotted. Even around the beads you can see where the dry rot's caused the rubber to separate. You can almost peel this rubber off but it's gone so hard it's actually more like plastic. So yeah, and the rim itself's also bent the lip back, that was there to begin with but the lip itself has actually been rolled back in a uniform manner from that amount of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. But as you can see, it, the steel belts just started tearing and breaking and that was the end of it. Made quite a mess. The tube had absolutely no structural advantage. It's basically like a party balloon at that sort of pressure. It has absolutely no reinforcing or protective properties it just makes it easier to fill them with water because you can just back it down and connect the hose up and fill it up whereas tubeless you have to create a, um, a high point which in this case was a, uh, a bleed tube tap, drilled and tapped into the rim and as you can see at the highest spot it split not where there were already holes in the casing like these were pissing water like mad but these two pieces of metal which have actually punctured the tire before it was removed from the SUV, the Mazda Tribute, um, I was honestly expecting it to split here. That's why I put these uh, paint pen marks, but it didn't. It failed right at the top. And you can see it on high speed. It's just a standard two ply. Again, there's nothing special about it. Yeah, there's two plies in the sidewall and three or four in the tread. It's nothing special at all. I'm just going to cut these off the rim. Actually, I might save this rim. I'll try and dismount it with the bead breaker. And you can see the tread started to split through there as well. There's no steel down here, but you've got to watch your fingers when you get to the tread part. You can see it's just, it's just snapped. A uniform break all the way across, and that was it. But yeah, that's just two plies and an outer skin of protective rubber. Nothing special at all. You can see the end of a cord there which has been looped around the bead and brought back over. You can almost push that off by hand or by standing on it. <laughs> Very stretched. But that let go at 300 psi, so that's quite spectacular. I was not expecting it to go up to 300, especially not with existing damage. But, well, got to give the Bridgestone Duel a credit. It took a lot of pressure considering the abuse it's been through. This one's been under vacuum a couple of times as well. This is one of the ones I pulled a complete vacuum on and collapsed. So it's been through a lot of abuse, but yeah, didn't want to go. That one did though. <laughs> oh well, out with the grinder. Or at least the tire levers.